Hello my dear friends, today we are going to learn Euclid's division lemma. Euclid was a great mathematician, he was a Greek mathematician born around 2300 years ago. Division is a simple process that we are learning since our childhood, so I don't want to talk anymore about division. Some simply, it's simply dividing one number or some number integers by another integer or number, right? And the lemma that we need to learn, lemma is a, is a proven statement by someone which again which is again used to prove another statement right that is called lemma but to understand this Euclid division lemma we need to have a basic a little bit simple concept of long division method so I'm taking a small example of the long division method suppose I have a number 13 and I'm dividing 13 number by any number suppose uh, 4 okay fine 4 then I will get 4 3s are 12 and when I will subtract 12 from the 13 I will get one remainder let me re name these all quant uh, these all things 4 which is dividing uh, dividing 13 is called the divisor and this 13 itself which is being divided by the 4 that's divisor is dividend and the quotient this is 3 is called the quotient and the one remain at last is called the remainder so what we can say that when dividend 13 is divided by 4 divisor we get the 3 quotient and 1 remainder the same thing we can illustrate something differently by the balls also suppose I have the 13 balls 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 I have the 13 balls and when I will when I will group this 13 balls in in a, in, a, in a group of four right when I will convert this 13 ball in the groups of four then I will get such groups of four three and one ball will remain ungrouped I mean to say when I'll group this all balls in the group of four like this first four of first group this is right and then second group this is and then third group this is so 4 plus 4 8 8 plus 4 12 already I have taken 12 ball and altogether there are 13 balls so I am only I have only one now one ball so here I got this first group second group and the third group but this one ball is remain ungrouped the same thing this 13 I can write something like this also one two three four this is the group of four balls and such groups I have one two and three so I can say I have such three groups and one ball is remained ungrouped so what I can say that 13 is equals to this four times the three plus this one ball so I can represent this 13 as 4 times the 3 plus 1 also it's the same thing right and the 13 is here now dividend so in the place of 13 I can write dividend dividend is equals to 4 here 4 is the divisor so I can write here divisor times the 3 3 is here the quotient so times the quotient plus the 1 and 1 is here remainder so now I can write here remainder well so what we learned today that dividend is equals to divisor times the quotient plus the remainder I think we're learning this the so way we're learning uh, divide D in the division we had learned this again I'm repeating this here here when I will change the dividend and the divisor in the same way this quotient and the remainder will change and uh, suppose I'm writing this 13 again right but n I'm not dividing this 13 by the 4 I'm dividing 13 by some another number suppose 5 then I will get 5 to the 10 and I will get the remainder 3 so the same thing again I can write that 13 dividend is equals to the divisor times the quotient divisor is the 5 and the quotient is the 2 so I can write 5 times the 2 plus remainder remainder is here 3 
right and when I will divide the same 13 by some other quantity suppose 6 then I will get uh, 6 to the 12 minus 1 so what I can write here that 13 is again equals to 6 times the 2 plus 1 6 is the divisor divisor and 2 is the quotient and 1 is the remainder and the same thing I'm doing here suppose uh, I have another number suppose I have 23 and when I'm dividing this 23 by another number suppose 4 then I will get 4 5 that 20 and when I will subtract 20 from the 23 I'll get the 3 remainder so what I can write that 23 is equals to divisor 4 times the quotient 5 4 times the 5 that is 20 plus the 3 is the remainder right and I'm doing again I'm taking another number suppose uh, I have a number uh, suppose 45 and I'm dividing this 45 by 8 then what I will get 8 5 the 40 and when I will subtract then I will get 5 here again so what I can write that 45 is equals to 8 times the 5 plus the 5 I'm again taking another number suppose I have the 30 and I'm dividing this 30 by 5 then I will get uh, 5 no I'm dividing by the 10 5 I have already taken so 10 3 is a 30 and I will get the answer 0 here remainder so what I can write 13 is equals to 30 is equals to 10 times the 3 plus the 0 10 here is the divisor 3 here is the quotient and 0 or is it there here the remainder so in this way we can represent any number any integer in this way right if you you can pr proceed a lot and what I mean to say here that actually why I'm concentrating you here suppose this 13 13 23 45 and 30 like this integer is representing dividend by uh, a here a represents the dividend is all dividend and this 5 6 4 8 10 these integers or numbers or divisor are represented by the B then we are getting some unique pairs of quotient this quotient unique pairs of quotient I mean to say equals to quotient plus this remainder remainder whenever we get the dividend and the divisor we get unique pairs of quotient and remainder but every time what we get uh, that remainder remainder which is being represented by the R here is every time greater than 0 right this 5 3 1 3 these all are greater than the 0 or equals to 0 so remainder is here greater than or equals to 0 but every time what we are watching here that it is less than the divisor divisor is here 5 6 4 8 10 so when when we were 0 the divisor was 10 when the remainder was 5 the divisor was 8 when the remainder was 3 divisor was 4 when remainder was 1 divisor was 6 when remainder was 3 then divisor was 5 every time what we get that divisor is greater than the remainder right and remainder we get sometimes equals to 0 also and greater than 0 also so finally what we can conclude that whenever we get the two positive integers like a and b then we get a unique pair of quotient and the remainder where the remainder is greater than or equals to zero but less than the, the divisor that is B so this is exactly called this is exactly this statement is exactly called the Euclid's Euclid's division lemma let me repeat once again whenever we get the two positive integers a and b then we get a unique pair of quotient and remainder where the remainder is greater than or equals to zero but less than the dividend uh, sorry less than the b that's dividend itself right less than the another quantity a small quantity this b okay so I hope you understand this uh, what is Euclid's division lemma now after learning this we'll be learning now Euclid's division algorithm